Hi, it's Randall with Carter Hill Honeybees. Today's Wednesday, May the 19th, 2021. Uh, swarm season's pretty much passed here. I got some time here. I want to kind of show you what I've learned in my beekeeping career about catching swarms and swarm traps. Uh, to this point in my career, this is all I've ever used, the paper machés. I've got it mounted to a piece of plywood and I hang and uh, drive a nail in a tree or on the side of the building and I just simply hang it up on there. Now, the boxes that you make that, that folks make and catch swarms in that has the frames and all. I'm sure they're a lot better. You don't have to worry about them building up in there like you do these. This is what I started with early in my beekeeping career. So the fundamentals are pretty much gonna be the same. I just kind of want to share with you how I set one of these up and you can adapt it to whatever you want to use. I think the most important thing is the volume of the cavity and the entrance. So that regardless of what you use, you want to have good volume for the bees to interpret as a good place to make a home. If the volume is too small, it's not going to be as attractive. I kind of look at it like, in a way, kind of like bass fishing. Uh, you're, you're trying to you're trying to lure the bees. You're trying to offer them the best uh, selection for what's out there between a cavity in somebody's house, a cavity in a tree, or a cavity in a water meter, or a tire on a truck, or whatever. You're you're trying to set your trap up to to give them the best option for them to make their new home in. And that's kind of the way I look at it in both in how I set my trap up and where I place my trap and how far I, I set my traps up away from my, either my colonies or wherever I'm trying to catch a swarm at. Now I initially started this early in my beekeeping career and I've always been able to catch a few swarms every year, but uh, the last the last two years I haven't set out traps. I didn't set none out this year because I wanted to focus uh, on my mite management and the new stuff I was trying, so I, I didn't want to take the time to put these out and have to check on them every few days. If you use this particular type of trap, there's nothing wrong with it. But I learned this from experience. Uh, wherever you put them out, I put out 10 or 12 of these every year around, around mostly around town and some around my yards, but I feel like it's best to check these every three days. And if you come across one and you see scout activity, uh, I recommend you check it every day until either the, the scouting ceases or you catch the swarm. Pretty much if you see scouting activities, probably two different times. In other words, meaning probably two different swarms and they don't come there, you probably should look at relocating. It may not be quite optimal. And you might be able to move it just even just 20 yards and have better success. So what I'm gonna do is kind of take this apart and show you how I've got this set up. And then I'm gonna take some time and show you where I've had success in the past and kind of what it looks like. And I, and I really wanted to wait till the trees greened up good before I done this video. So, I mean, this is way late. That I would suggest you probably wanna research these areas while the trees are greened up and then you can kind of note those areas and then the next spring, before the trees leaf out, you can place your traps and you know what it's gonna look like as the hardwoods green up. Because usually, not all the time, but my, probably the majority of your swarms are gonna come right after hardwood trees green up. And uh, so that that's kind of why you wanna study that now and, and plan ahead for that. So we get situated here and I'll show you how I set up the inside of this trap. To begin with, I just simply have one screw in the top holding it in, so all I have to do is just back the screw out and then it just comes right apart, like this. So I've got reposition here and got my camera where you can see better, and I'm hoping this translates good. So this is the back part of this particular kind of trap. What's important, or one thing I've discovered that seems to be important is the smell more than the quantity of comb. So if you don't, if you can get a hold just of a piece of old brood comb like this right here, I just simply took a small piece and screwed it to the back because like I say, I think the smell of it's more important than the actual size of the, the comb. So, and, and that's worked well for me. And that's basically all I do to the back of this trap. I have it screwed to this piece of plywood like so and in a hole here where I can just hang it up on the tree. Nice and neat. And these little ridges right here are for the bees to start their combs. So now I'll show you the other end. These traps come with a, in my opinion, a lot of them come with too big of a hole. And I, I like to reduce that down. I think 
from Dr. Seeley's book, if I remember correctly, about somewhere around three square inches total opening is what the bees naturally select more often if they have the choice. So, and that's what I'm trying to do here is duplicate that. That's a one inch diameter hole, and that's that's slightly over three square inches of opening. Now the dirt dauber nests, uh, they're not supposed to be in there, but uh, I'll clean those out before I use these again. But I just simply take a piece of scrap plywood and, and attach in there. And, and then I just got a piece of limber wire X'd off in there and that keeps birds out. Now a word of caution, if you put one of these up and you don't get a swarm, or at least here where I'm at in northwest Alabama, when you go to take these down, I usually take them down mid-May, early June. About 90% of them are going to have a, a red wasp nest in them. So just be prepared for that. Usually they'll bolt off and not do anything. I've never had one try to steam me, but it, it's kind of a surprise to see three or four wasps come out of here. But, but just be aware you may have wasp issues when you take these down without a swarm in them. The other thing I do to prep in terms of lemongrass oil, one of the most common mistakes I see people make uh, is they want to put way too much lemongrass oil. I don't have any experience with swarm commander, so this is my setup to try to duplicate an actual swarm row that you buy that comes in a little plastic tube. So what I have found out is by trial and error, if you take that cotton ball and put a drop or two of lemongrass oil in here and you put it, you just hang it up in here, in about a week or so it's going to be totally dry and dissipated. So what I tried a few years ago, and this works really well, is I'll put that same amount of lemongrass oil on it, on the cotton ball, and I'll seal it up in this Ziploc bag. This is a snack size. And just lay it right there by the entrance. I got it secured with a screw. And uh, it'll last two or three weeks that way. And that, that's worked really good for me as well. If you put too much lemongrass oil in there, you may get a swarm come, but more than likely they'll they'll come. They may try to go in there, but they're just going to go out and either hang on the outside of the trap or they're going to just leave it all together. Back in my first or second year of beekeeping, I went to one, our state meet here in Alabama and they had a, a doctor gentleman there and I cannot remember his name, but it really wasn't, the information really wasn't practical for, for beekeeping, but the one the one takeaway I did get from it was when he touched on how, how well bees can smell and if I believe they had actually trained bees to find explosives, he pointed out that, that honeybees has a a much more sensitive smell than dogs do and that that's all that always stuck with me all this time kind of keep that in mind you know if you can just barely smell that lemongrass oil in the ziplock bag it's plenty strong enough for a passing bee to catch a sniff of it then ease over there and check it out it, it don't take near as much as what you think i urge i urge caution on lemongrass oil and swarm commander as most of the time what you think is enough is way too much so just you know just be careful with that and that's basically all there is to it now you can adapt this this setup to any kind of box that you want to do like i say the, the importance of it is the volume of this the bees are not going to interpret your combs as, as you know unless they're drawn out already or used they're just going to interpret that as an obstruction and what they're they're looking for is is a cavity like this and the neat thing is when you come up on bees checking this out they'll be bouncing around in here and it sounds a lot like microwave popcorn it'll be two or three hundred bees bouncing around in here and they're just checking the volume of that cavity so now that, that's kind of how i set it up i'll put this back together and i'm gonna go around and show you some places here around my yard at, at home and then some other places at some other yards i've had success with these and where i placed them and why i think they work now the first year i put these out here at the house i started placing them about I put six or eight of them out and I went about a quarter mile up to about a mile away all you know in a, in a circle around my house so I did I lost three or four swarms that spring that's probably been five or six years ago I didn't catch a single swarm I didn't even have any scouts check it out so the next year I moved them closer so I, I kind of went to the other end I started placing them about 80 yards away up to about 250 yards and I don't know if that's the optimal distance but uh, I caught a lot more swarms that way I'd catch probably five six seven a year doing that just off of my bees so anyway now we'll we'll move on and I want to show you where I place my swarm traps and why I place it there and what you're what you kind of want to look for right here's where I store my swarm traps in the all season when I don't use them 
and this is outside it's facing south there's a all about two and a half foot overhang right there so they're protected from the weather pretty good well a couple of years ago i had a swarm come and move into one of these so i was just curious why it selected that particular trap i think the trap was actually right there where that hole was at so when i took it apart and installed the bees in a in a box they had selected the one that had a little bit of comb in there they had been a colony located itself in that trap the previous summer before and it left comb in there about three or four of them about the size of a softball or a cantaloupe and none of these other ones really had any comb in it but uh that that definitely had a factor in them selecting that one it, since it it chose that particular one and the, the bees was checking out several of them and i also wanted to mention in every case i paid attention this year i, I went ahead and let those bee production colonies down there swarm out I think I lost one out of maybe five swarms I was able to catch but in each case before a swarm issued for about two days they would be multiple scouts checking out these nukes so that that's kind of something interesting and I've noticed that going on for a few years actually they will check these out for a couple of days before the swarm issues so this, I'm going to show you a place that I did not have success and it's this wood line here is about 30 yards thick and this is some really thick stuff it's going to take me a minute. I'm going to turn this camera off while he's in there and show you where I hung it and what happened. So right here is the location. There's the, the nail. I didn't bring the I didn't bring the trap in here because it's just too thick. Pretty much a lot of that's briars between here and there. But that's up towards my bee yard. So you got a little wood line here about 30 yards across. And you got a branch right here. My bees water down here in the summer when it's dry. There's like a spring or something comes out down here. So I had one swarm that checked this out pretty good, but I never did catch one here. And I, I, and I believe the reason why it's just too thick in here. If they had nothing else to go to, they might would take this, but this is definitely a low odd place. And I never put one back in here after that. So down further on the tree line, about another hundred yards, this is about 200 yards away from my yard. I'm at the, almost at the corner of this field. Now I've trumped the weeds down a little bit down there. I've done placed the trap. But, and this has grown up a little bit since the last call of swarm here. But if you'll see the trap right there, that's exactly where I had it uh, about three years ago. If you'll notice how it's secluded in the shade, well, there's a little sun hitting it now, but it's shaded for the most part. It's kind of secluded and it has a clear flight path to the entrance and it's, it's real discreet along this tree line. I've caught two swarms right there so that I've had real good luck there and I'll be putting one there again in the future. But this real tight cover right there. Nice little flight path to the open field. Now here's another location. This will be a little bit west of my bees previous location I just showed you down there across the road where I caught a swarm. So this is about 80 yards in behind my colonies. So I caught a swarm right there. Uh, somebody's cleared out a couple of little branches that used to be really secluded now. So I might would have to choose a different location next year or the next time I do this. But I'd want it to look a little bit more like that area right there. That's, that's probably a, that may be a better place to hang it now. But, that would give you the same effect as secluded the colony be secluded and then you have kind of a clear flight path to the entrance and uh, that's kind of what i'm looking for but i did catch a swarm out there a good swarm three years ago so here's a place i've caught at least two maybe three swarms over the past five years and this is going to be about a uh, about 100 yards from my colonies which are right down there but this is this is ideal. Notice it's only a couple of feet off the ground. The height don't seem to matter. You see the trap is kind of concealed, but they have a nice open flight path to the entrance. So for whatever reason, that seems to increase the odds. I'm definitely having more success by placing my traps that way. Oh, and I want to mention, I should have mentioned this at the first, when I do catch a swarm and it's away from me, my house what i do is this may sound a little crazy but it works 
I just take a garbage bag and go to the location at right at dark. Might have to smoke the bees in a little bit and I just ease it down in the garbage bag and put a couple of twists on it. Make sure that you know there's plenty of air in there. Usually it don't take me 10 or 15 minutes to get home. And I just sit over in a pasture seat and hold it. And I just drive home with those bees in the trap. And then I install them when I get home. I'll have a box ready for it. But I've had real good luck with this location right here. I put a trap on the barn right there a few years ago. It got checked out two or three times. And I never did catch one in there. And it's just kind of in the middle of this open field right here. So for whatever reason, the bees didn't select to go in that one. And I, I haven't put one there since then. And I've actually got bees back in behind this barn here. Right there. Right down there I got a yard. And there's the back side of that barn. But you, as you can see though, it's right kind of in the middle of this field. And I got my yards here. I got my colonies here, got seven colonies. Now that's not the ones that was here at that time, but we're basically about a hundred yards away. And another reason I tried it there was I knew for a fact there was uh, two or three beekeepers within a half a mile or so of right here. So I was just, you know, trying to look, but that particular spot didn't work out. I probably would have had better luck if I'd have put it on that tree line somewhere up through there and had it kind of hid or maybe even in that patch of privet right there somewhere along up in there it would have probably been more successful than trying to put it on that barn i will mention this in towns especially smaller towns or if you know of some bees in some smaller towns in either in people's houses or bee trees or if you you know if you hear people talking about a lot of bees working blooms in their yards and stuff in town Anywhere you see bees working forage is a good place to put a trap, pretty much. The town I live close to, I've caught several swarms in over the years. Anywhere I've ever caught swarms, I knew for a fact that there was colonies within half a mile of where I was putting the trap at. So I've actually had pretty good luck catching swarms in towns, even in subdivisions, or a subdivision, I should say. But in that subdivision, I knew there was a, at least a bee tree and a couple houses with bees in them nearby. That's the important thing, knowing that there's some parent colonies within a relative distance of it. If you go somewhere and you don't see any bees at all, they're probably gonna be pretty hard to catch a swarm. That's probably one key thing is just to find out for sure if there's a bee colony or honey bees working area, you know, relatively close. Kind of showed you a couple of places I've had trial and error in the past and put place in swarm traps and kind of how I prepare a swarm trap when I hang it out and where I place it and kind of what I look for. So basically kind of review again, uh, I doctored up with about a drop or two of lemongrass oil on a cotton ball, put that in a Ziploc sandwich bag and a piece of old comb in there, you don't have to be a full sheet. And then I place it somewhere that's kind of along a tree line that kind of discreetly hides the trap but gives them a clear flight path to the entrance as I demonstrated in some of the other places I've actually caught swarms. Now I've never caught a swarm on this tree line right here. And also you want to place it in an area that you know that there's colonies, you know, relatively close within at least a half a mile. Two or three hundred yards is probably even better. But all those things right there combined together will give you a pretty good chance of catching a swarm. It's kind of like bass fishing, the way I look at it, you're, you're trying to give the, the best lure to lure the bees into your into your trap. You know, like if we, you know, we as humans, if we go on vacation or somewhere and you drive down a street and you've got 15, 20 motels to choose from, you're probably gonna do a little research and pick out the best one if it's got a leaky roof or has odd smells or something in there. You're probably not gonna wanna stay in there. You're gonna choose the, the best option you have within a given area. And that's pretty much what the bees are are doing they're trying to select a site that's going to give them the best opportunity to survive winter you know and reproduce and they're looking for a, at least a specific size colony a, a fairly easy to defend entrance so it's in a way it's kind of like bass fishing kind of the way i look at it, it put your traps tight to structure and have a discreet flight path to the entrance and you know, kind of have it hidden shaded and that that's worked really well for me in my estimation, I have probably caught 
in uh, probably the last uh, 12 years, that's about how many years I've been doing this, I've probably caught 50 or 60 swarms and traps like that. And and I've tried different things most every year, but this the stuff I showed you today, I was, I've had the best success kind of following that philosophy and putting my traps out every year. Definitely the solid improvements by doing that for sure. Well, I appreciate you for joining me for this video today. We'll see you next time.